Have you ever wished you could use a stopwatch in MATLAB? Perhaps you would like to measure how long it will take to execute some code. Perhaps you have two methods for performing a task and you want to see which is more efficient. Or maybe you want a countdown timer. All these and more can be done using the tick and talk commands in MATLAB, and I will show you how to use them. Let's start with the basic use of tick and talk. So here's some code. I have a pause to simulate some tasks that our code may have performed. So let's save this and run it. So I started a timer. I performed some code and then measured that time interval. The time interval is just a little bit over a quarter of a second. And I simulated a quarter second time interval. So that extra could be some latency in the pause command or the talk command. I'm not sure it's about four milliseconds. So we'll say this is a basic demonstration of tick and talk. Another way to do this is to save the output of talk to a variable. Actually, we'll just run that. And it gives me this number in seconds, so I might like to format it better. Let's run that. Oh, that didn't quite work. It's because I need to put in the variable into sprintf. Okay, there it is. About a quarter of a second. Let's make that more precise. Okay, again, you see the little extra latency. All right, so a more complex demonstration will be here. Now we'll insert two pauses. And to make it a little bit more elaborate, we'll put here a variable for the tick. So we'll call that a start time. And then we'll put here first interval. And with a talk, we'll now add as an argument the start time variable. So that causes this interval to be referenced to the start time. Next, we'll have a mid time. And we'll take another timing. This time we'll use talk and we'll reference mid time. So that gets the interval that should be about three quarters of a second. And then finally, we'll use talk again, but this time it will be referencing the start time. So I will display these. And so we have a little more than quarter second, a little more than three quarters of a second, and then a little more than a second in total. So that's a more complex demonstration. Finally, we'll end with a countdown timer. Let's establish a time limit. I'll make it three seconds. We need to initialize a while variable for a while loop that we're going to build. So we'll call it times up. It'll allow the loop to uh, continue as long as time is not up. Now we need to have a timer. And now we need to reassess times up. One way to do this is to compare time elapsed to the time limit. And let's display a message. Actually, I'm going to change my times up condition so that I have a variable to print here. I want to print the time remaining. Now, since I have a time remaining, I can put here time remaining greater than zero. We'll use greater than or equal to zero. And for the status message, I will calculate it here. All right, we think that'll work. Let's give it a shot. So I run this. Okay, it doesn't like status MSG, so I need to fix this. Okay, so it didn't calculate this correctly. 
oh, here's my error. It should be time remaining less than or equal to zero. Now if we run this, you can see how the loop goes. It waits a little bit, checks the time, continues. Then by the time we get to the termination condition, we've actually gone beyond the time limit by about a hundredth of a second. That's okay. The loop still recognizes that time is up and it stops. I hope you found that helpful. Please subscribe, like the video, or leave a comment. Thanks and have a great day.